Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Joseph Hall? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Joseph Hall was born on June 19, 2000, and grew up in Riverside, California. His father was named Jeff Hall, and his mother was named Letitia Neal. They married two weeks after Joseph was born. Joseph's mother had used alcohol, marijuana, heroin, LSD, and methamphetamine when she was pregnant with him. The marriage between Joseph's parents did not last. After they separated, Joseph lived with his mother. Due to numerous complaints to social services about neglect and other offenses, Joseph and his sister were placed with their grandmother in 2003. In 2004, Joseph's father, Jeff Hall, was granted full custody of Joseph and his sister. By this point, Jeff was married to a woman named Krista McCary. The couple would go on to have three children together. Life wasn't any better for Joseph living with Jeff and Krista Jeff worked as a plumber, but was unemployed after 2008. He was addicted to methamphetamine, Percocet, and alcohol. Jeff was frequently violent and could be triggered by just about anything. In late 2007, Krista's sister was killed in a hit-and-run collision caused by an illegal immigrant from Mexico. This fatality, as well as Jeff's inability to find a job, led to him adopting an extreme belief system. He joined the National Socialist Party and eventually became a regional leader. He was considered a rising star. Jeff would throw neo-Nazi parties in his home each month. In 2010, he ran for the Western Municipal Water District Board. He was unsuccessful, but somehow managed to get almost 30% of the vote. I guess this was part of his master plan. Like first he would get on the water board, then the zoning board, the planning board. Before he knew it, he would be on the board of library trustees and be virtually unstoppable. Jeff tried to teach his son Joseph about his extreme belief system. He taught his son how to handle firearms and even took him along on armed patrols of the border with Mexico. Jeff's marriage to Krista wasn't going well. Jeff was having an affair with a woman in Arizona. He and Krista were fighting and there was talk of separation and divorce. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On April 30, 2011, Jeff Hall held one of his parties at his home. About 12 members were in attendance. Krista and the children were there as well. Both Jeff and Krista consumed alcohol during the meeting. Jeff left the meeting with a friend to give a young woman a ride home. Krista and her three children fell asleep as they watched the movie Yogi Bear on television. Joseph and his sister went to their own room to sleep. Jeff Hall returned sometime around 3 a.m., now on May 1. Krista went to the kitchen and talked to him. He was consuming alcohol and not in a good mood. The two argued because Krista was planning on moving out of the family home. Krista eventually went to bed, and Jeff fell asleep on the couch. While he was sleeping, Joseph retrieved his father's Rossi 357 Magnum revolver from a low shelf in the closet of the master bedroom. The gun had been stored loaded. Joseph walked downstairs and shot his father in the head. He used four fingers to pull the hammer back and two fingers to pull the trigger. Krista heard a loud noise, but she thought a kitchen shelf had fallen. Apparently, this had happened before. She went to the bathroom before making her way downstairs to investigate. All the lights were off, but the television was on. When she activated the lights, she saw Jeff on the couch, bleeding. At this point, Joseph walked downstairs and informed Krista, quote, I shot Dad, unquote. Krista called 911. The police were dispatched at 4.04 a.m. After arriving at the Hall residence, the police determined that 32-year-old Jeff Hall had died from a single gunshot wound to the head. They found Joseph hiding under his covers in his bedroom. The revolver used to kill Jeff was found under Joseph's bed. Joseph made several statements to the police while still at the scene. A few examples. 
Joseph said that he grabbed the gun and shot his dad in the ear. He explained that his father had been physically violent a few days earlier. The previous night, his father said that he would remove all the smoke detectors and burn the house down. Joseph suggested that he regretted shooting his father, and he knew his behavior was wrong. At one point, Joseph asked, how many lives do people usually get? Which one could interpret as a failure to understand the finality of death, although it's not clear if Joseph was referring to himself or his father. Two days after the shooting, on May 3, 2011, Joseph was charged with murder. He pleaded not guilty and not guilty by reason of insanity. Joseph was tried in juvenile court. Mental health professionals testified that he had a series of mental health difficulties resulting from a lifetime of exposure to violence. He experienced moral confusion, had difficulties with social functioning, and did not understand society's standpoint of right and wrong. In 2013, the court found that it was true that Joseph Hall committed second-degree murder. In the juvenile court system in California, there is no guilty or not guilty. Joseph Hall was sentenced to 10 years in a California juvenile detention facility. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, Joseph had a very challenging childhood as far as the way he was treated. Between the two places where Joseph had lived, with his mother and with his father, social services issued 23 reports containing various allegations including neglect, poor living conditions, and other various forms of mistreatment. Much of the time, Joseph lived in squalor. The smell of urine was ever-present, and bugs would crawl on the dishes and the sink. He often went without any electricity. Joseph was exposed to an extreme belief system. It's reasonable to believe that this negatively affected him. Perhaps it normalized violence as a way of solving differences. Item number two, Joseph was described as a difficult child with severe behavioral problems. His paternal grandmother could not care for him. He was impossible to control. Joseph was diagnosed with ADHD and had below average intelligence. He was unable or unwilling to sit still in school. He was impulsive, would get in trouble often, and was extremely and repeatedly violent with others. He would bite, scratch, kick, stab people with sharp objects, and possessed a particular affinity for starting fires. Joseph repeatedly threw tantrums where he would throw chairs and desks. Sometimes he would simply run out of class. Joseph hit, kicked, and scratched his teacher. He pulled her hair, called her very unkind words, threatened to kill her, stabbed her with a pencil, and tried to strangle her with a phone cord. Joseph attended at least six different schools. Eventually, Jeff pulled him out of school and homeschooled him. Item number three is the issue of premeditation. One argument in this case is that Joseph didn't really understand the finality of shooting his father in the head. For example, Joseph asked the police about how many lives a person has available. He also claimed that he thought his father would recover from the gunshot wound and they would reconcile. The idea that Joseph didn't know what he was doing has some support, but overall, I think that his action was premeditated for a few different reasons. Joseph had a motive to kill his father, Jeff. He talked about how, on the day before the shooting, his father had threatened to burn the house down. And a few days before the incident, Jeff threw a glass at Krista, which cut her. Joseph indicated that he was afraid of having to choose between his father and his stepmother. They were getting ready to separate. If Joseph thought that his father would come back to life, then shooting his father would not have resolved that problem. Joseph's sister said that she was on a swing set with Joseph the day before the shooting. He revealed his homicidal plan at that time. I don't know exactly why Joseph shot his father, but it seems clear his intent was to kill him. This was something that he planned to do, and he wanted his father to no longer be alive. Item number four, what caused Joseph to kill his father? This question has been hotly debated. There are many theories. One, Jeff was a bad person who maintained dangerous belief systems. He must have formed Joseph into a killer. Two, Joseph was already on the road to becoming a killer when Jeff was awarded full custody of him. 
Jeff's bad behavior only accelerated the arrival of the inevitable outcome. Here's what I think happened. This is just a theory, my opinion. Joseph was on a destructive path from the very beginning of his life. He never really had much of a chance. He was exposed to drugs before he was born, perhaps inherited a few maladaptive personality traits, and learned a lot of antisocial behavior during his early years. He had the worst role models anyone could ever imagine. Joseph's father, Jeff, was a confused individual who responded drastically to personal stressors, like the loss of his job and the death of his wife's sister. At some level, Jeff probably thought he was a good father. Many people who knew him described him as a devoted and caring father, but he did not have the insight to realize what he was doing to Joseph. Jeff was training Joseph that violence was a way to satisfy feelings of frustration, injustice, and pain. This created a perfect storm. Joseph was already demonstrating antisocial traits when Jeff fanned the flames. He taught Joseph how to transform dangerous impulses into lethal outcomes. For example, he showed Joseph how to use firearms, and he kept a revolver loaded where Joseph could reach it. Ultimately, I think what happened here is this. Jeff taught Joseph two strategies, how to hate other people and how to hate his father. As it turns out, Jeff did a better job at teaching the latter strategy. Now moving to my final item, number five. What would justice have looked like in this case? Was justice actually served? Some have argued that there is no excuse for this homicide. Jeff was not an immediate threat when he was shot and killed. Others believe that Joseph should be given a pass, even suggesting that Jeff somehow deserved it or should have expected it. Here's my opinion. Joseph's behavior was far outside the norm for a 10-year-old. I don't think it can fully be explained by having bad parents. I think he should have been held responsible for his behavior and given the treatment necessary to avoid violence in the future. I think the sentence of 10 years was reasonable. Joseph was a dangerous individual. No matter who or what caused Joseph to be the way that he was, he was simply too destructive to be free in society. Those are my thoughts on the case of Joseph Hall. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.